I don't even know if you think about this, but it's like you came from the universe of like Improv Olympic in Chicago and Second City and then did Groundlings. But then like, at least from afar, you seem to be part of like the kind of like Bobby Lee and like Bert Kreischer, <laughs> like like Rogan, like bro LA universe. It's so weird. Yeah, I it like it no though. Sense. Thank you. No, but I like it. I'm trying to wrap my brain around it because like when <laughs> I when I came up in comedy, those worlds were almost like arch enemies, like improv and stand up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know what you mean. Like when I first started stand up, I remember. Because I just, for whatever reason, fell into being, like, at the comedy store all the time. And, like, my first week of stand-up, Mark Marin, I, I met him at the store and was like, I'm such a fan. This is so cool. I'm meeting you. And he, he looked at me and was like, this is literally, I've been in L.A. for one week. I was 21. He was like, you shouldn't be here. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you don't. He's like, you should get out of this place. <laughs> He's like, I actually have a show at this place called UCB. You should just come watch me and like see what that venue is. Sarah Silverman will be there. And he, it was funny. He really was like looked at me and was like, get out of the comedy store. Really? Yeah. And I did go see his show at UCB and it was really cool. And I couldn't believe like Sarah Silverman was there. And then I went back to the comedy store. I was yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. But how do you even end up at the comedy store? Because you were like doing like groundlings. Well, I wasn't. So that's kind of all like fake news. Like I, <laughs> I did. I took classes at those places, mm -hmm. you know, because I grew up in Skokie, suburb of Chicago. Yeah. So I did I.O. and I loved it. And, you know, I was in college at Champaign-Urbana and I really did not fit in. And so every weekend I would take the train back to a two hour train ride back to Chicago to do class at IO. Oh my God. I love that. I know. But it's so late. It's like I left college on the weekends, like to go take a different class. It's like so sad. I clearly did not fit in with the culture there. But so, and then that's when I was like halfway through my junior year and was like, I'm quitting. Like I hate it. Yes. I hated college. Um, so I took those classes and then I forgot where I was because I'm eight months pregnant. But you, so you were taking those classes and then eventually went to Los oh, Angeles after school. I moved to L.A. And one night, the night I moved to L.A., I was at a bar on La Brea called Luna Park. And I was just like goofing off with my friend who had driven me out. And she was like, you're really funny. And I was like, really? That's so weird. Like, I just moved here to kind of, like, get into comedy, but I don't know how. And she's like, you should go to the comedy store. And I was like, okay. And I'd never heard of it. And then that was, like, that was it. <laughs> this is a weird story. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like everything just kind of, like, like, I didn't, I, I cannot express to you how naive I was when I moved to L.A. I literally thought, and I always tell Dave this, and he's, like, obsessed with it. it Your fiance, Dave. Yes, King. yes. Are we allowed to say that? Yeah. The writer Dave King. <laughs> yes. It's hilarious. Um, who's a huge fan of yours. Aww. Um, I thought when I moved to L.A., I was like, look, I all I want to do is try to make it. And here's what's going to happen. In one year. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm going to either be the, Will oh, Ferrell. the one year plan is going to be huge. Yeah. I will be Will Ferrell. Yeah. Movie star. Yeah, yeah. And if not, I'll move home and I'll work at Walgreens. I can walk there from my parents' house. I don't need a car. Yeah. So those were my two options. And I was just, that's how, that's, that was not smart. I had a lot of learning to it's do. It's funny how different the plans are <laughs> <laughs> from the outcomes, <laughs> right? Like, because it's like, I similarly, like, I was like, I'm going to move to New York and then I'm going to live on my sister Gina's couch, like not even far from here in Brooklyn. And then I'm going to get past at all the clubs and then I'm going to, you know, and wait, that, I feel like that worked. That was sounds great. Yeah, but it didn't. <laughs> but it didn't work. It didn't work right away. Right. It, right. it worked. It, it worked over the course of a, a few years. And it what's interesting is there was no it's funny you're saying like on the weekends you were driving from Skokie or we well, were from, no, from Champagne. Yeah. Was it a train or like train? A, yeah, yeah. Train. Yeah similarly like i was i was in when i was in college i was working the door at the washington dc improv and i would like take the bus like on the weekends and go over and it was kind of like that's what i was really interested in but then meanwhile like i was at this college and i was supposed to be like studying and i was sort of 
but I was mostly studying like writing and I was kind of blowing off my other classes and I was really like trying to be a comedian that's so similar to me like I remember feeling so frustrated and isolated in college like I had this almost like I was hitting my head against the wall this feeling that was like I know I like learning and I want to (laughs) learn but I don't like what they're making me learn yeah and it like frustrated me I couldn't like express that and that that led to me quitting but I was very lost in college and I'm very like envious of people who found the right school and got to like have a good experience but I just that wasn't really on the table for me like my dad my parents really wanted me to go to that specific school which was a big 10 school two hours from the house oh. like, but that was like frat sorority culture I didn't drink I just was it like I can see how it very easily led to me being like isolated and like watching The Office illegally and just being like obsessed with comedy. But then like you fell in with like this whole like universe of like essentially like comedy store comics. Yeah. Like, the, like Bobby Lee's and like Burt Kreischer's of the world. Not Burt so much. He wasn't really around. But I think that's just a name that like brands that 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 it's like very much the branding of it i love bert but i don't actually know him that well but bobby definitely and like who was in that gr- yeah marin who whitney. else was in that group oh whitney yeah um chelsea and natasha were around mm-hmm. moshe came around mm-hmm. uh, you know oh, moshe's a, moshe Kasha, Kasha's a store comedian i didn't even yeah, realize actually he is yeah i know he's another one where it's like wait that doesn't he should be at the ucb but right he's everywhere right you know um like those kinds of people i would say yeah this is like all this is literally all new to me because i'm i'm so disconnected from the los angeles comedy scene like when i'm there i maybe go to largo or something that makes sense why we've never had crossover yeah i'm so like an la girl which i hate like i i hate it it's like embarrassing because the la comedy scene has the worst reputation like it's just lame and then you like I was saying earlier, I spent four months in New York last year and it was like my dreams came true. I got to play the New York comedy clubs and like walk around from set to set. And I really had the like romantic, I'm a stand up, I'm on a subway. Yeah. So I like long for that so much. Wow. We got to steal you. (laughs) New York York comedy got to steal you. I know. Yeah. But then there are, yeah, there, there is like a weird like New York, LA comedy schism but there are a lot of great la comics so it's like not that ground it's not that founded of a snob snobbery that we, yeah that, we, that new york comics have yeah but i do i know that like i fit in one of the la comedian stereotypes which i can't believe i'm putting myself on blast but it's like i'm not really a joke girl <laughs> and i know that's like bold to say as a person who identifies as a stand-up comedian but i feel like in New York, it's really about the jokes, which is makes sense. And I am like, I have this aversion to actual jokes. <laughs> I know that's. But you have some great jokes. <laughs> but like I, you like... have that great joke about how you're like, you know, I would never, I would never be with my dad. Like he's seventy five oh, and broke yeah. or whatever. Yeah, oh yeah, and I forgot it, about that. <laughs> That's such a joke joke, you know? I guess that's true. But like there's something within me that fights that thought. And I'm like almost like I like I'm icked out by jokes. And I want to pretend that they're not jokes because there's something about like the like the algebra or like the math of like a hard hitting joke that I'm I don't like it. And when I think about stand up for me, I it needs to feel like a real thing i would say yeah of course and not i agree (laughs) and so i'm i would rather it be that than like a perfectly crafted joke even though they like you said it is a joke but in my mind i can't i i'm like ill no it's not but i'm obsessed with that exact thing that you're saying which is the intersection of something you would say and that is real and true to you and also something that like that joke about your dad like has a left turn yeah it gets a laugh at least yeah but also it's an insane left turn <laughs> you know like <laughs> i'm not attracted to, you know i never sleep with my dad or whatever he's 75 and doesn't have money like it's an absurd line but it's true it's also true like <laughs> it's like, true but it's a full joke <laughs> 
I mean, you claiming to not like jokes and then like writing a joke that perfect is like you have a lot to answer for. <clears throat> That's so nice of you. And I'm really I do appreciate you coming to bat for me right away and like <laughs> making sure everyone knows I do tell jokes. But um, like I think a lot about that sort of Judd like rule in comedy and I bring that up because I know you work with him and you probably like follow this too but I always think like what is the funny thing that it's funny coming out of that person's yes. mouth yeah that's so, and that's why your your special hot for my name is part of the reason it's so funny hot for my name yeah so, yeah yeah <laughs> It's which is which is also by the way a great joke and true and true <laughs> right so it's like I can I think I can give this away because the special came out yeah, a few years ago totally, please but it's like it's like someone suggested that you change your name when you moved to Hollywood oh, yeah that's right and then and then you're like no Pavitsky's a family name and they're like no no Esther <laughs> you're making me laugh with my own jokes yeah it's a good joke <laughs> come on come on people. Oh, These are good jokes. You're actually <clears throat> making me feel a little relieved. At least you are retelling of them. Because as we were, as I was saying, when we were walking in here. Like when you watch your stand up from three, four years ago, I'm just like, oh, I have my delivery. I just, I, I can't. It's really yes. It's like so stiff, and I don't like it at all. And I'm, I feel so eager to get another special out because I want to be so different now i don't know but i am glad at least that i'm like okay the material sounds like it was okay (laughs) it was really funny and like just to give context to people who haven't seen the special you should watch the special it's on youtube it's on all the comedy central wherever comedy central is now i don't know no one knows (laughs) (laughs) um but it's a but it's a great special and you you go in between vignettes of you with your actual parents in skokie and it's great like to the point where the the interludes are so good that i'm like what did you shoot a hundred hours of this stuff? Like it's so good. Or did you just get gold right away? We shot not a ton, but more, it's certainly more than what we got, what we showed. So somewhere in the middle of your two guesses, I would say. And I'm very proud of the, the, that, that footage. Yeah. And in fact, I'm like my goal compliment or diss for the special. I love when people are like, you're, Esther, your stand-up is the least funniest thing in your special. Like, that's the goal. I think my parents are so funny. And, I mean, everyone thinks their parents are funny, so I get it. But I'm glad that we actually kind of captured some of it. Yeah. And and also sort of like the origins of why I am this way, I think, are there a little bit. You say I love you to your parents. Do they say I love you back? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because your mom tucks you in and you say you're my best friend. And she doesn't respond. And then you say, I love you. Oh, yeah. It's and, really sweet. And she says, I don't have, I said, no, I, and I go, am I your best friend? And she's like, I don't have a best friend. I don't have a best friend. Yeah. She's Finnish. And so she's just like, not, there's just, a, they don't really emote. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. The Finnish people are quiet. Oh, interesting. And they're kind, but it's yeah. a quiet kindness healthcare. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have they have their annual saunas. checkups and saunas yeah. yeah yeah they're drinking a lot of water yeah so she's but just, they don't emote no she's yeah. very different i get it culturally i i always think like if you can take yeah take something that is like awkward and painful and embarrassing like and put it out there like i the story that you tell in your special that is so funny to me is your fiance dave had a bachelor oh, party yeah. in vegas <laughs> and then you showed up you dropped him off at the airport and then you showed up in vegas like yeah i can't even grasp how you would arrive at that as a good idea wait that's like the exact perfect reaction <laughs> that like everyone gave to me Everyone like, and I'm what? in Shaw. I don't understand you this sho- side. You showed up at his hotel room. You he didn't even tell you his hotel room number. No. You got it from the front desk. Mm-hmm. I, what yes. are you doing? I know, and it is. In, it's fascinating. <laughs> Again, I never could have come to your view of it, but sure. everyone gave me this view. I remember my dad sat me down. And was like, 
you need to come to your senses and not do this. Did you tell your dad you were about to do it? Yeah, I told my parents. You I told everyone in your life, but you didn't tell Dave? Yeah, yeah. Was it a bit? I mean, are you like Andy Kaufman? Like, that's <laughs> such an extreme thing to do in your life. Oh, my God. To get the Andy reference? <laughs> that is go- Oh, my God. That's bigger than getting a Larry David comparison. Thank you. Holy shit. I have to deflect that. That's too nice. Um, But obsessed. But... Um, I genuinely am just, my brain is just delusional. I thought it would be funny. I okay. thought he would be happy to see me. Okay. Okay. He so it is a little bit of a bit. <laughs> yeah. Like I definitely, in the way I told it in the special was more like I was going to see what he was up to because I, I needed, I found that I needed an angle or else it seemed so wacky that I did that. Yeah. But that was not it at all. I literally was just like, Hey, like thought it would be funny. Oh my gosh. I know. He did not think it was funny and he was pissed. It's an invasion of privacy. <laughs> yes, I'm learning boundaries <laughs> at 35. I'm learning them. But he was it it was like it was so awkward when I got to his room. We had he like he obviously he's like I he he had the energy of I guess I'll invite you in. And like we sat in his room oh and it gosh. was just like a quiet like he was like why did you do this? And I was like, it's not funny. <laughs> Are we sure? <laughs> Are we sure? Like, it, it's crazy. Uh, we're both comedians. Yeah. We're both comedy writers. It's a funny thing. And then I quickly had to re- reassure him, like, I'm not here to hang out with you and your friends. And he, I think that was like a huge relief, you know, that I wasn't going to like. Right. Crash. Try. Yeah. Fully crash. Yeah. And with that, and then, then it was fine. And he's still kind of like, I literally can't believe you did that. <laughs> And also, like, men online. <laughs> men online. Not a fan of that. Movie. Always a disturbing beginning of a sentence. <laughs> men online. <laughs> like, I get so much hate when that story comes up. Like, people just... And I'm like, I I don't know. I, I don't see it the way everyone else sees it. I And I'm like, hopefully I only ever have one fiancé with one bachelor party. It was a once-in-a-lifetime deal. And I think also, ch- too, in my head, I was like... Oh, maybe it'll be like a movie idea here yeah. or something. That's a really funny thing about men online. Do you get the men online hate generally for your stand up? No. And if I do, I tune it out. It's yeah. like the same generic stuff. I don't really care. I think I've been getting criticized for so long as has everyone who exists online that yeah. I, I tune that stuff out pretty I do a good job at it. It was just that one specific that bachelor party came up on a podcast I was doing with Rick Glassman last year. And I was like, whoa, I didn't again. I just didn't see this reaction coming. I saw it so differently. But but it's also when you put it in the context you're putting it in. It is very funny. Thank you. Like I didn't see it like the way you tell it is as though you're not doing it as a bit, but you're explaining <laughs> it now. Like it is, that's a very funny, absurd thing to do. Okay. Good. Are you the type of girlfriend who, like, would you read his texts? The first like few months of our relationship, I did. Shocking. And it was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was like the after the third time that he was in the shower, and I went through his phone, and there was nothing there. I was like, oh, this is done. Like, I don't need to do this anymore. I like got it out of my body, but it's cause I was such a crazy young girl in my twenties who was in like my previous relationships were like, everyone was lying and fighting yes. and was toxic. And yeah, so totally. I only knew that. And right. so then I find this healthy guy, this boring man, Dave yeah, King, <laughs> who's like so <laughs> mature and healthy. And of course I'm going to start it out being old Esther. Who's yeah. like, you know suspicious and whatever and just insecure couldn't believe that this guy would actually be couldn't had never had the experience of like a guy liking me being honest just genuinely enjoying spending time with me so i just didn't know that that could be and i think that's like more common than you think it's like if you don't find that how do you know that that exists and so i really like learned a lot of how to be an um, like a secure adult secure attachment that's what he has i had anxious insecure or something is this like a clinical thing that i i don't yeah. know yeah wait you don't know term. attachment styles no what if, yeah i, I know I, mean, <laughs> I know attachment styles <laughs> yeah, let me just look it up um, if you don't know them you're no, probably I, secure attached 
No, I, you know, tell me what they are. Cause I, I am curious. So there's like anxious attached, oh. anxious, avoidant, avoidant, and then secure. And so like, what? <laughs> no, no. I'm just like, it's a lot to take in. I feel like I'm like all of the above or something. No, you're, I think you're giving secure. Don't okay. Worry. I'm giving secure vibes. Yeah. Like the most common toxic, uh, combo is an anxious and an avoidant. So then it's like the anxious is like, are you sure you like me? And then the avoidant is like, oh, they like me too much. And then they run away. And then the oh, anxious yeah, runs closer. Bad. That was like everything before I found Dave. Really? Yes. That was all your relationships? Yes. I mean, it's not that many, but it's like I was always anxiously attached. And, and, and the person was avoidant of discussing it with you. Yeah. Not maybe specifically that, but just that would play out in different ways. Ooh. And I think this is all our caregivers' faults. <laughs> is that true? Yeah. Do you think it's from our parents? That's what they say. Wait, in other words, like we're mimicking what our parents did. Like if you're secure attached, that means that your needs were always met. And I think if you're anxious, your me your needs were sometimes met. Okay. So I don't remember what avoidant is, but you were abandoned by your But dad. I wasn't. So <laughs> <laughs> So I don't really know what happened. I keep trying to figure it out, but I can't. It's like I think it actually is my fault in some way. But anyway, so I, I think for people out there who are like, I don't know how to get out of break the cycle. It's like you kind of need to get get on board with a secure attached and like w learn there. Right. And that's what happened right away with him. I, I couldn't believe it. It was just like, and that's, I feel like a common theme for me. I kind of just need to be exposed yeah. to the right thing and then I can get the hang of it. Interesting. Like. So you, you're anxious and so you needed a secure. Yeah. Every anxious needs a secure. <laughs> Everyone, you need it. But how many secu are there enough secures to go around? Great question. <laughs> it, they say that there should be, but I don't buy it. I think they're so rare. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And certainly in Los Angeles. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. And honestly, New York. I bet. I've always. I this is a joke I've kicked around for years, but I always say it to my single friends you know like don't move to new york because every every single woman thinks they're in sex in the city and every single man thinks they're in Mad Men, and we're all in game <laughs> of thrones <laughs> all right so this is called a slow round um what are your what are people's favorite and least favorite things about you oh my goodness i'm like i don't i don't want to know Oh. I don't know. I think huh. my family's yeah. favorite thing is probably that I pay for everything. Oh, that's huge. <laughs> Financial stability. <laughs> they love <laughs> when I do that. Oh my gosh. And I fully am on board with buying their love. Like, oh God. I don't mind at all. And least favorite. I'm a mope. Oh, you're a mope. Like, I'm like a complaining mope. Yeah. Wow, really? Like, literally, I was complaining about being pregnant, and then someone was like, I think you're always like this. And I was, I had to really, <laughs> I had to <laughs> really look within and be like, okay, there is for sure some truth to that. So. What's the thing that you find yourself complaining about most on a regular basis? It's so hard, because right now, it's just being pregnant. Yeah, yeah. And I can't remember life before that, really. Oh, my gosh. Like, I, wow. I don't know. But, you know, I'm, I, my natural disposition is not like, happy, let's plan the day. Yes. You know, that's not, and neither me or Dave are like that. We always joke, like, we need a third person in the relationship yeah. to just, like, plan stuff. Because we're not planners, but we're, we're working on it. I guess the third person could be the baby. Um, is that good? Yeah, that's not too much to put on a baby. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what my dad always says about me, which I think is he's, he's like, he says I'm a generous laugher and that I do like to have fun and that like well, that's, that's nice. probably what people enjoy. And I do think in comedy especially, I – because we're around people who like to make people laugh yeah. and I like to laugh that it's easy to fit in for me. Cause I'd, ra I'd so much rather be sitting in the green room, quiet laughing than be the one on stage laughs. Yeah. Really? 
Yeah, I mean, when I'm on stage, I always want my stage time, but I'm just saying, like, when people are all hanging out, yeah. that's when I love to just sit and be. I'm like, I'm like a little baby. I'm like, entertain me. You guys are funny. And I, yeah. and thankfully, we're in a business where a lot of people are like, yeah, down. Totally. <laughs> so I'm going to look at that as a good quality. <laughs> it is a good quality. Even though it's I not. Had to, I didn't really. <laughs> <laughs> rip the positive quality out of you i love to have fun even your, though i'm a mope your most positive and least positive were both negative qualities <laughs> <laughs> we've never had that what's a song that makes you cry i don't cry that easily despite clearly looking like i do like i would <laughs> i have the personality of a girl who cries all the time but i've like trained myself to be tough for some reason I but I love listening to Lana Del Rey. Mm. I love her music, her lyrics. I love that she's a sad lover girl and she's similar to sort of what we've been talking about. Like she's really honest about vulnerable things. Yeah. That would be hard to share just like being way too into a guy or something like that. So I do really, really like I like her music a lot. So you get locked into the emotion of her stuff, but you don't necessarily cry. No, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Her stuff, I think it's just great for that exact reason. Yeah. There's not a lot of like crazy girls out there really articulating it well. Yeah. And beautifully. And she does it. Was there a group growing up that wouldn't let you in? Like my own family. <laughs> This is, my, I'll quickly tell you my famous story, my famous story <laughs> of being at my aunt's house in Wisconsin and like not being able to find any of my cousins and then just sitting with the adults for like two hours listening to them talk and it was so boring and I was just like, I don't know where everyone is. And then finding out they were all playing in the attic without me. Oh. So that, that was hard. So your own <laughs> child peers. Yeah. I still don't why know why. Why do you why. think they excluded you? The only lead I have. <laughs> the only lead. Is that my sister was the oldest and she was the ringleader. And she was probably like, it's fun to play with other kids other than my sister. That's like the softest version I can think of. Wow. That I can live so with. So you were really excluded. Yeah. From like, even just kids. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I didn't feel that way at school. Like, I felt like. At school, I was confident and kind of a leader. It was yeah. more, uh, yeah, it kind of, none, none of this is adding up now that I think about it. But I just was very also different from my family because my mom, like I said, was Finnish and my dad is Jewish. And so it was always with my mom's family. And so I was like the Jewish one. And I think that made me like a, just a little different. Yeah. You know. It makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Do you remember as a kid doing something bad and you got away with it? You know, I did a couple of things that like were bold. And I remember my dad's reaction, which would not be what you'd think a dad's reaction would be. It was like, well, you're trying new things, you know. So there was an acceptance of like kookiness. What was I the think. thing? Do you remember? Or can you not say? I don't want to say. Oh, you don't want to say? No. Wow. It was like extreme. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. I know. I'm sorry. What is what is the general theme of what occurred? Mm, nudity. Okay. <laughs> Maybe so bleep that nudity. out. Okay. We can bleep out the theme? <laughs> I mean, we can, but like... I think you got to find your inner Lana Del Rey on this one. Yeah. Okay. You don't have to bleep it. <laughs> <laughs> so you wait, wait till I walk down the aisle. <laughs> oh my gosh. So you're, so your dad with that incident was just like, well, you're just finding yourself. Yeah. That's nice. I love that. Yeah. I'm, I'm grateful for that too now. Yeah. Cause I was never, it made me not feel shame and I ne I didn't feel like I need to hide things from my parents. When I learned that other kids were doing that, I was like, why? I don't right. know. So I hope that that's something that I want to, I hope that as a parent, I can figure out how to replay. Yeah. Do you like, what are the things that you hope to model, you know, 
to do you hope what do you what do you hope to do as a parent that your parents did and then what are the things that you want to kind of reverse from your parent that you got from your parents i don't know do you do you tell me what to do i don't know <laughs> i mean i think we're all trying our best i have no pl- like i have no plans as a parent okay I think that's fine. Yeah, I'm that like, seems good. We'll just figure it out, right? Won't overthink it. Yeah, I think that's that seems great. And Dave is healthy and secure, and so I feel like I can trust that he'll have good instincts. He's, I will say, of all the people I've met, your fiance Dave, he's one of the more stable people I've met in the comedy field. He's very stable. Or presents as stable. He's so stable. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's great. It's so weird. Like, we always joke that if he ever killed me, <laughs> my parents would take his side because they would know that he's so stable oh that if it something led to that, they'd be like, we, we know that if he did it, like, right. he, had, he had to. Wow. You should do that as a bit. Oh, okay. You can do that? I'll try it. That's a great bit. Okay. You just got to find more punchlines, but it's like. That's a ugh. The hardest part. Yeah, but that but that's a great <laughs> setup because it because it's the exact thing we're talking about. It's true, right? It, there's like it's insane, but there's truth if, there. If they kill, if someone killed their daughter, they would take the guy's side because that guy's such a such a champ. <laughs> he's such a good guy. <laughs> such a stand up fella. Yeah. <gasps> and he's what's the psychological term you use for him? He's he's a uh, steady or. He's secure attached. He's secure attached. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I just think it's really fertile. That's a good idea. I see how you're really good at, like, directing and helping people shape one man shows. Like, because I feel like the things you're picking up on are good, big themes that would, there'd be a lot there. Well, I think, like, that's why, I don't know. That's kind of the premise of the show and the premise of, I feel like, the way I think about comedy, which is, like, it, you kind of just have to hang out with other comics and have them tell you what's interesting about you because yeah because you, you kind of can't know yes oh my god i so remember making that discovery of like the first few times you talk about yourself with other comedians and then they're like wait that's crazy and you're like <laughs> it, you're like it is i would have never known that is such a real what, way to find stuff i'll throw it back to you what do you think like you you listen to this podcast what do you think i might be missing about myself that might be funny Oh, that's interesting. Like, what should I explore that I haven't explored, maybe? And it might be wrong. Like, I'm open to it being not even right. I wonder, like, what it's like to move through the world as, like, just a guy with, like, blue eyes that's, like, <laughs> friendly. I don't – I'm, like, I don't know anything about what, like – I'm curious, like, did women like you when you were single? <laughs> like, are you insecure or confident? This is so funny. Did you, what, uh, one thing I was, like, recently th- rethinking, especially about the movie, because it was about a, sort of about a breakup, like, w- one of the things that really upset me about being, a few specific times I was dumped, was that when I was being broken up with, the guy really... I could feel his his main character energy mm. like making me feel small. And then that got me thinking like do all guys just have main character energy? It could be. And it then, could be. But I I know I like always thought I had it too, so I'm not like hating on guys for having it, but I would be curious like do you do you feel like a main character kind of guy or did you when you were, you know, like finding yourself or are you not that and that's why you're successful cuz you're like we're weird i don't know these are good questions and these are i think these are good like penetrating kind of i should self probe on a lot of the stuff i was talking recently about like being single for this exact reason like i i and, and it didn't go anywhere because it's almost like i feel like the audience sometimes can't flash back with me on it because they're kind of like we can't even picture you when you were in your 20s like i like I had this joke where I was like, like I hated being single because it's like this like insane experience where you're just like basically like walking around the world being like, 
does anyone want to be naked at the same time? And then like a lot of people are like, no. And then you got to be like, oh, and me neither. You know what I mean? And then some people say yes. And then you say no. And then you, and then you got And then that's a whole thing. Yeah. You know, and it's like, yeah, I, I, that was my experience of being a single person was, it was a lot of, I think it was a lot of anxiety at, matching and mismatching all the time oh. being like we're a match we're not a match we're ne- i'm gonna go okay well, i don't want it, this to end you know what i mean yeah well how what age did you find in your- my 20s and then yeah and then i met jenny you know when we were, we were like 20 i was like i was like 25 or something oh okay so that's pretty young and then we got married when, when i was 30 so, oh wow yeah. see that's very different from someone like dave who i would always be like to him wow before we met like you must have just been like at home in your apartment like i wonder when i'll find her you know you must have just been thinking that and he would just his response is like no i was fine i didn't think about that at all i was reading books (laughs) watching shows (laughs) i'm like what this is this working it out section just new material okay do you just jot things down in your phone yeah. kind of thing yeah. that, that's sort of my whole deal yeah i had the one the other day my uber driver in new jersey didn't speak english and we and so we didn't really talk and so then but then we drove by a man dressed in a full baby outfit like a bonnet and a tight fitting mini top and the and the driver looks back at me and he goes baby or no baby <laughs> and then he starts laughing and then i start laughing and then I go, exactly. <laughs> and I realize that in that way, like comedy crosses all barriers, baby or no baby. It does. That is beautiful. I, it, that just makes me feel good. It makes me. Oh, it does? Yeah. Because I, I can't think of a specific, but I, of course, have had interactions that are awkward and quiet. And then something really crazy happens and you're instantly like when you discover you're on the same page with this person that yes. you assumed you would have nothing in common with, but it's like, Oh, we're, well, we're n- not, we're both not crazy enough right. to dress up like babies and think that's normal. Totally. So we have that. I wrote this, which is, I feel like we don't choose what we remember from our own lives. Like I don't remember my daughter's third birthday party, but I remember the day that my friend Ed told me that you could watch porn on the internet for free. They weren't the same day. It was the fall of 2011. I couldn't believe it. I was like, all my dreams are coming true at the same time. And then I do this digression where I go, to be clear, I don't support the ethics of how porn is made. Uh, But it's kind of like the ethics of eating meat. Like I've watched the documentaries about how awful the meat industry is. But I also love a a good fried chicken sandwich. And I think that those contradictions can peacefully coexist. Or I should say they're going to have to. (laughs) <laughs> because good luck trying to get people to stop eating fried chicken sandwiches while eating porn. <laughs> I like that comparison a lot, that analogy. The meat the meat industry. Yeah, because I feel the same way about both industries. Like I I can cons- or all pretty much actually like everything we consume as Americans is like got here. I have this like sweater, everything yeah, got the here. Phones. What the hell's in those phones? Where do we, where to come from? It's all gotten here in a really yes. bad way, but I'm ill begotten gains. I'm, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I'm complicit, and I will never not be. I'm not gonna like lead the charge and like right. move us all to an island where there's peace. Like I don't know how to do that. Right. But I wait. Now I'm thinking like, is there ethical porn? Have you ever watched? only fans have you watched I, I, I mean yeah there is this one girl that i knew that dave was curious about <laughs> and he would never do it himself and i was like i signed up you can look oh my and god so that's so funny i felt like i was like being really nice with that and he he was like oh that's cool that you did that but he's not interested he wasn't like whatever but yeah, sometimes, I mean, look, when you're a girl in Hollywood for 15 years, you're going to come across people who are eventually going to end up on OnlyFans and you're going to want to see what's going on. Oh, interesting. So that's my take on it. So in other words, like you've encountered people in Los Angeles where you're like, they've mentioned or someone else has mentioned they're on OnlyFans. And then you're like, eventually you're like, all right, I I'll should, support. I'll support that. Yeah. yeah I'll throw eight ninety nine your way. Yeah. Just to see what's going on and maybe get creatively inspired. I don't know. 
I get that. Did you feel creatively inspired? No. <laughs> no. All right. Do you have Do you have any bits you're working on that are like half half seedlings of bits or anything like that? Well, it's it's like a bad time because the pregnancy has been rough. Yeah. So I have not been writing that create like I gotta feel comfortable to be creative, and yeah. it's been a minute. This is absolutely nowhere near a bit, but I did recently clock. I was just really feeling strongly that I wish that me and Dave were a gay male couple. Mm. I feel like gay male couples, like, they just, I, they're awesome. I don't know, like, mostly just this is coming from not ever wanting to have to be pregnant, but... And he agreed. He was like, I wish we were a gay male couple yeah. too. Like we just, we were both kind of going into what that could be like. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. There's something appealing about that. Yeah. It's a strong, a strong gay couple raising a child. Like there's no hormonal cycle that yeah. we're dealing with. There's no, we're, I don't know. It seems like gay men's sex life is probably really fun. There just yeah. seems like there's a lot of. I don't know. I would love some testosterone. But again, this is like the pregnancy. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, I can't believe this chore that I have. Oh. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, I'm grateful. Yeah, you're grateful. You're grateful. Blast. <laughs> Hashtag blast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wait, I actually have a funny, I have a random story about the that porn joke, the remembering porn yeah. joke. Is, I don't know. I don't know if I'll if I'll do this as a bit, but it, I just think it's a th- interesting addendum. Which is, I was on the subway to the comedy cellar one night, and I had m- the little joke cards, you know, like this, and I'm going through them. And this woman next to me goes, "Oh, are you a comedian?" And I go, "Yeah." And um, she goes, uh, "I go, yeah. I'm just heading to the club right now. I'm working on a new joke." And then we both look down at the card, and it says, uh, "Remembering porn." <laughs> and then it. It just sat there, and she didn't say anything, and I didn't say anything, and then I left the subway. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was horrible. She's probably like, it he's was... not very good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was truly like, oh, the titles for these jokes are so embarrassing. But isn't it kind of fun when someone finds out you're a comedian, they don't know who you are, and they just you could tell that they like feel bad for you, and you're like, sure. no, it's fine. I'm fine. Don't Trust worry me. about me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll be all right. <laughs> So the final thing we do is called working out for our cause. And basically, if there's any nonprofit that you support, we contribute to them and we link to them in the show notes. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. Anything for rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. I can't remember the name of the foundation, but. I'm going to look it up. So we're going to contribute to the Rheumatoid Arthritis Foundation um, at helpfightra.org. And thanks for coming on the show, Esther. Thank you so much for having me. (laughs) I like. I'm such a fangirl of this show. I really, I, I discovered it like a couple months ago and just completely binged the whole thing and was like, this is the only smart content in comedy Aww. podcasting. And so I'm really grateful. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for doing it. Thanks for having me. Mm-hmm.